Hey, welcome to this training all on how to get your first 1000 subscribers on YouTube. I'm actually going to be sharing some tips from a story of how someone in just the last six months got 1000 subscribers in less than 10 days. And the strategies you're going to be learning in this session are going to help you whether you're starting a new channel, whether you're just beginning or you want to revive your channel. And I want you to imagine, though, just for a second, not just hitting your first 1000, but maybe getting that silver play button. You know, I remember starting YouTube 10 years ago and now I've built multiple channels, but there's something about setting intentions, having goals. And in this very session, I'm going to be talking about the lessons I learned on the way, not just to a thousand, but to a hundred thousand and even a million subscribers. I'm also going to be talking about tips for making money and we're going to do a little bit of goal setting. So buckle your seatbelt and get ready for this deep dive training. This is actually a part of a seven part series that we're doing to help you really crush it on YouTube this year. Right now, we're going to talk about the ASQ method. And then tomorrow and the next day inside of actually our private Facebook group. Right now, we're streaming this on face uh, on uh, YouTube as well. Just this first session. So think media shout me out in the comments. Hit the like button if you're here. Uh, but I want you to get ready for the next couple of days as well as all seven sessions that are happening this week. And throughout this training, we're going to be learning money-making strategies to help you make your first $1,000 or next $1,000 online through YouTube and through the online business you're going to build around your channel. And if you haven't heard about our challenge yet, you can actually still register at tube1kchallenge.com. You can see the details in the description, and I'm so fired up to get into this today. But shout me out, where are you watching from? And then all over social media, the official hashtag for this event is hashtag grow with video. So I'd love to connect with you. In fact, um, tag us on Instagram at official think media. If you haven't started following this Instagram account, we have so much valuable information about cameras, tech, YouTube. You can tag us in your stories, official think media and use the hashtag grow with video. We'd love to DM you, connect with you. If you've got questions, this is the place to connect with us. It's on Instagram and we'd love to connect with you there. Let's get into this session. It's called the ASQ method the simple and easy strategy that anyone can do to get 1,000 subscribers and beyond. And it's um, in this session, we're going to be talking about some new YouTube stats you need to know, the powerful YouTube secret I learned from Dave Ramsey and Gary Vaynerchuk, how to use the ASQ method to get views and earn money, and a whole lot more. But right now, we are asking the question, you know, is it too late to start YouTube? Like right now, we're asking... You know, YouTube started in 2005. And so YouTube is, I'm not good at math, 17 years old. Last year, it got its driver's license and we're afraid it's on the road. Like YouTube has been maturing. So the question is, can you still break out? Can you still break in? And I've got good news for you. The answer is yes. And that's not just my opinion. I actually want to talk about why now is the best time to be going all in on YouTube. Not only is it continue to grow in terms of monthly active users with 2.3 billion users worldwide. Now imagine how big that number is. And imagine your 1,000 subscribers, they're in there. Your 10,000 subscribers, they're in there. But only if you get clear, you create a valuable channel with a smart strategy, but the opportunity is there. And the pandemic accelerated the growth of YouTube and the consumption of YouTube. Like my parents watch YouTube. I just had Christmas with my parents. They're like, yeah, we've been, we, we have favorite YouTubers. There's like this singing couple in the car. They put it on their little projector. My, my stepdad, Phil, he loves his projector. He's like, he's like, check out these YouTube channels I'm watching. I'm like, what the heck's happening? Kyle Anderson on the, on the Think Media team. He's like, my dad is watching Mr. Beast every morning and a farming channel every day, religiously watching this vlog. So YouTube is still healthy. It's still growing, but the rabbit hole goes deeper. Signal Fire did a report that revealed that being a content creator or joining the creator economy is the fastest growing type of small business. Better than starting a Subway franchise is starting a YouTube channel. For real, like that this is a practical thing. And I know that 10 years ago when I'd be at a family event, they'd say, oh, you're trying to build a YouTube channel? Why don't you get a real job? And at the time, that was kind of like, oh, that you got a point. Like, is this thing going to work out? Now, when, you know, Uncle Chip could be like, why don't you get a real job? I could be like, this is a real job. Like this isn't, and, and not just because it actually is a job for me, but literally this is the fastest growing type of small 
business being in the creator economy. And you may have seen this Forbes article that talks about why the creator economy is worth watching in 2022. It says with more than 50 million independent content creators, curators, and community builders fueling this new trend, this generation of micro entrepreneurs is currently valued at $20 billion. I'll continue. But right now, this industry creator economy is currently valued at $20 billion. Think about the size of that number. And think about the practicality. Is it possible for you to earn a couple extra $100 a month, $1,000 a month, $32,000 a year, a six-figure income? Think about how much room there is inside of the creator economy ecosystem for you to launch a channel, start a channel, build your brand, build your business. But check this out. It now says with estimations that it could grow to a $104 billion market in 2022. From 20 billion to 104 billion in the next 12 months. Friend, this is a wave. Like we're out here about to go surfing and it's time to start paddling and get ready to ride this wave. This isn't time to lean, like this is time to lean in. This is the math that's happening in this industry. And it goes on to say that 800 million in venture capital, in venture capital is being invested in creator ventures. There, it's crazy what's happening with companies, brands, sponsors, sponsoring micro-influencers. People are buying people's YouTube channels. Like one of our students is, is in a process of selling their YouTube channel for a seven-figure exit. Who ever thought about exiting their YouTube channel? But there's it's a whole new world. And so you might be asking like, man, I'm committing to this five-day challenge. Is this even worth my time? It is. And it's, it's worth it to lean in, to take notes, and to really get your strategy right, your plan right, your game plan right, because there's so much opportunity. And YouTube is a discovery machine. I think the question we got to ask ourselves, Sean, in social media, I have so many things to say. I want to entertain people. You know, in fact, let me know what you're, in the comments. What's your goal when it comes to being on YouTube and sharing your message? I want to inspire people. I want to solve a problem. I want to expand my business. But here's my challenge. I have zero subscribers. Like I don't, nobody knows me. So how do I get discovered? Like how do I especially start from zero? Like I see these other channels, well, they already have subscribers. Like they already started, they already had a head start. What do I do? This is a cool opportunity because YouTube is a discovery machine. And it's different than Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok. Sure, you can have some, maybe some viral success on some of these places. Unfortunately, organic reach is going down and down and down and down on all of these platforms. But meanwhile, YouTube stands in contrast to all these other platforms because YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. In fact, seven out of 10 people go to YouTube trying to solve a problem. So if you're making the right videos, you can get discovered even when nobody knows you. And the power of YouTube is all these other platforms, they kind of are like the social media hamster wheel. And we love social media. like, And so I think there's opportunity to be sharing your content in multiple places, but YouTube's different. These other platforms are like a content feed. I know, because we're constantly feeding on it. Give me another TikTok, man. Give me another dopamine hit, man. You know, we're in there we're constantly. I'm arguing with my relatives about politics on my Facebook. I'm just, you're just on social media. Social media is a feed. All the other platforms, it's a feed, it's a feed, it's a feed. YouTube is a content library. Like when I was growing up and I was reading Choose Your Own Adventures, come on, anybody with me? Uh, and I was reading Choose Your Own Adventures, I would go to the library in second grade and I would go to the librarian and she would help me with the Dewey Decimal System. And she would say, this is where the teen fiction is. This is where the science fiction is. And you would go and you would look up a particular book when you wanted to be entertained or have a particular question you were asking. YouTube is a content library. So you can make one video that people keep looking up like a book. They keep reading it year after year, month after month. So this is why it's so important to go all in on YouTube. And I'll demonstrate uh, with this video right here. So I posted this video in 2018. Think about that. It's four years ago, 2018. In the last two days, this one video has gotten 4,334 views. What? Yeah, that's actually 180 views an hour. So when we hang out during this hour long training, this video will be viewed 180 times and I posted it four years ago. 
And you see, the reason that's happening is because people are searching for something and they're finding this video in YouTube search. As a result, this video has earned me $23,546. But imagine that. Four years ago, I posted it once, yet it keeps paying me today. People hate on passive income. I don't know what they're talking about. This is real passive income, man. I'm not doing anything to this video. Like this video was made once in 2018 and it paid me in 2019. I got paid in 2020. I got paid in 2021. I'm still getting paid in 2022. I made one video. No other platforms like this. And not only that, this one video grew the Think Media channel by 47,000 subscribers. So, well, Sean, easy for you to say you're the YouTube guy. No, not easy for me to say. It, it's the fact that I've put in the work. I've had the right strategies. And friend, when you apply these, imagine just getting 10% of those results. That means you would grow, one video could grow your channel by 4,700 subscribers. 1%. 470 subscribers, 10% of that, 47 subscribers. One video can grow your channel by 47 subscribers. And that's what we are about to learn. And this is why some of the most known and consistently influential entrepreneurs invest in consistent YouTube content. Why does Grant Cardone, even though he's building a real estate portfolio, uh, use YouTube so much for this reason? Because it, he said his best channel is YouTube. His most influential that's grown his business the most is YouTube. Why does Lewis Howes invest, in, even though he's a podcaster, why does he invest in, in YouTube so much? Why does Gary Vaynerchuk invest in multiple different YouTube channels? There's a reason why does Brendan Burchard invest in multiple different YouTube channels to, to grow their influence and their businesses because it's the best platform for real deep and consistent influence. Sure, be on other places on social, but YouTube is the home base. It's the foundation. It is the, it's the place of, it's the pillar of authority and influence. And this is why some of the most known and consistently influential entrepreneurs invest in YouTube. And so is it too late to start YouTube, especially? Okay, Sean. Well, you know, I've seen some of your stuff before, bro. And like every year you talk about, is it too late to start YouTube? What's changed? Nothing. In fact, Six months ago, let me tell you a story. So six months ago, Larry starts a channel, all right? He posted his first video on June 9th, 2021. Now let's dispel a couple myths here. A couple things he does not have going for him. There's no light kit here. You can tell by the shadows on his face. There's no fancy studio. This is like his office where he works. It's not a fancy camera. This is a smartphone that he's filming on. It's no fancy graphics or fancy, he's not even having things swoop and swoosh in like I'm using StreamYard for right now right? Why? YouTube's about content value, less about production value. Now, during this challenge, we're going to help you with cameras, lighting. We'll help you with all that stuff. And leveling that stuff up is great. But think about, there, Larry does not have that kind of stuff going on. Larry is sharing from his heart. He's adding value and he's fo following a strategy that we're going to unpack in this training. But he posted his first video just a few months ago. And since that time, in the last six months, his channel has gr grown 53,000 subscribers. He got 1,000 subscribers in the first 10 days, almost a million views, and he's only posted 13 videos. Now, comparison is the thief of joy, right? So I'm not saying don't compare yourself. Maybe you've been doing YouTube for a while, but the thing that Larry's doing is he's posting the right videos. Yeah. He... The, he has the right strategy. He didn't go into YouTube without a plan. You can't go into 2022 on YouTube without a plan. There's something about leaning in with the right strategies. And that's what we're about to talk about. But hey, really quick, we're just meeting. I'm on a mission to help you build your influence with YouTube. A couple different channels. I've not just done this in one vertical. And contrary to what critics may say, I am not just one of those guys who had success on YouTube by talking about YouTube. Like before YouTube Secrets, the book, and before the silver play buttons and the gold play buttons, I was helping helping authors and speakers and pastors grow their YouTube channels, helping people raise their profits by leveraging the YouTube strategies that I was testing before I ever made them public. I've, I've built thousand and multi-thousand dollar income streams in the health niche, in all types of different, uh, in the entertainment niche. I have, I've had multiple flows of income and I had success on YouTube before teaching about YouTube as a tech YouTuber, all these different things. And I just share that because I think it's important that you kind of are discerning on who you follow and, and, and respect the people who have good information. But it makes me kind of think like if you've only had success on YouTube by teaching about YouTube, how deep does the 
does the does the rabbit hole go, bro? You know, like what's really happening? So so we've done this in multiple different niches and even channels that people don't know about. And then have had the number one best selling YouTube strategy book in the world called YouTube Secrets, where over 80,000 copies sold, had the chance to work with brands like Canon, Amazon, all kinds of brands. In fact, CNBC did a mini documentary on the journey. I'm a small town kid, college dropout. And, and they talked about the story of, of how we've built up kind of a mini YouTube empire over the last couple of years. Today, Think Media is a team of multiple content creators. And, and um, I'm most proud about our students. In fact, in this picture, Many of these students of our signature program called Video Ranking Academy, they started at zero. Like they hadn't even posted a video and they've reached that 100,000 subscriber mark. Some have started a, a little bit away on the journey, but it's just been so incredible to see the impact. But I share all that because of course I didn't start there. And, and I share all that because it speaks to the power of YouTube itself. And this is actually where I started, right? I grew up in Arlington, Washington, climbing trees. I am a digital immigrant. I, I, I remember when AOL would send me CDs when the internet was just getting started, the consumer internet. You know what I mean? I was on 28.8 dial-up internet just getting started. And as a small town kid, no connections in Hollywood, no connections in media, no, no formal, no film school, no like media training, know how to do any of this stuff. Friend, you think about it, YouTube is crazy because it's an equal opportunity platform. If you're putting out the right content in the right way, then from a small town with no connections and no fancy training or fancy, men, you know, whatever, you're able to see what can happen. This is, this is not just my story. This is now the story of thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people around the world of different ethnicities, ages, and backgrounds that are building their influence on YouTube. And, you know, I started in 2003 shooting videos for my local church first YouTube channel I started was in 2007 for my church. And it was terrible. Like the early videos were absolutely horrible, but I just started messy. Right. And I, in those days I was waiting tables. I worked at a place called Red Robin, which was a burger joint for 10 years, waiting tables, washing dishes. I was an expo host. I even wore the bird costume. If you've ever been to Red Robin, Red Robin. And, and I wore the, uh, you know, bottomless fries, the whole deal. And I, and I want to share this with you just to kind of speak to the journey because it, it can might seem today like, well, Sean, frick, dude, you have such a head start, which is true. Like this was, you got to never compare your beginning to somebody else's middle. So my friend John Acuff says. And I think that one of the biggest things that could get us stuck in 2022 is comparison. You got to run your own race and you got to start today and you got to start messy. And I kind of want to show you how I started. And this isn't even how I started. I started years before this making videos for my youth ministry that were terrible. And those are hidden away in an archive somewhere. I kind of wish I had them because they're even worse than this. But like, so eventually I get the courage to put a video on YouTube personally. And this is an example of it. Check this out. All right. So uh, this is, I guess, the first Sean Thanks vlog. And uh, I'm going to try to vlog every single day, um, mainly so I can remember what I'm even doing um, and what's going on because I just feel like I have a lot that I'm thinking about and I figured hey why not share it and if you find something interesting that's awesome now this is definitely uh, as real as it gets so I'm not going to try to be energetic or entertaining um, though maybe sometimes I will but anyways uh... yeah yeah I mean okay we're here in the five day YouTube 1K challenge. And I, I hope you were able to laugh at my expense, number one. Um, I think number two, I got a couple tips from you right off this video. Like uh, there's a few things happening. First of all, clearly I tried to actually have a studio set up. You can see it with the white sheet there. This is my, this is my inaugural video. Can you imagine you're gonna go on your inaugural, inaugural voyage? Let's get everything set up right. Are, is the table set up right? Is the decor set up right? What am I thinking that I don't even actually put up my background? So, you know, put a little effort into your first video as, as a tip. Secondly, I, I go into it saying, I don't even know what I'm doing. And maybe you feel that way. You're in the right place if you're like, I don't even know what I'm doing. So like, stick with this whole challenge because, you know, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And that's probably why this video did not perform very well because it had no plan, right? And then I go, listen, listen, friends, here's, here's what I can offer you. I'm not going to be energetic. 
and I'm not going to be entertaining. So, I mean, those are the things. Those are the promises of my YouTube channel. Bad promises. But friend, I hope this encourages you because your first videos, they're going to be your worst videos. And if I hadn't posted that video, I wouldn't be where I am today. I sometimes watch Nolan Moult and Omar El Takori on the Think Media team. And I think there can sometimes be a level where you'll put people on pedestals. Don't put people on pedestals. Don't compare your beginning to somebody else's middle. Like just start messy. You're looking at where they are today after work and sacrifice and learning and investing in themselves. Like you're investing in watching this training. And so don't, you know, first start before you're ready. Okay. Like you got to just start. And I've seen some people, maybe you're here and, and I heard somebody say they bought the camera years ago and they've got the gear and they got the software, but they've been afraid to start. Maybe because you don't feel ready. You're never going to feel ready. You got to just start before you're ready. Well, I don't have, my first video is not going to be perfect. No, I promise you won't. Well, my, my first video might be kind of embarrassing. Yeah, it will. You got to practice in public. But if you look back at the history of all of those that have built the momentum on YouTube now, the first thing is you got to just start. But secondly, friend, you got to commit to learning new skills because here's the truth. It's not like my second first, actually my second and my next like a hundred videos were actually just as bad, but like you got to commit to learning new skills. I couldn't have stayed the Sean I was yesterday. And I just want to challenge you this next five days, these seven sessions, I believe they're really going to be transformational, but you got to be willing to get uncomfortable. You can't stay the person that you were yesterday. Learning new skills means you will change. You may not be confident on camera. You can get confident on camera. You may not know how to use technology. You can learn how to use technology. You may not really understand how YouTube works. You can learn how YouTube works. You got to commit to learning new skills. And so I made a commitment 10, 11, 12 years ago when I uploaded that video to skill building, to investing in myself, to learning new skills. Over the last 10 years, been buying books, buying courses, attending events, committing to learning new skills. In fact, I learned that my only insurance for the future was investing in my skills today because the skills that I built brick by brick by brick over the years led to the business and the income and the YouTube growth and the, you know, and the, and the books and the silver play buttons and all that kind of stuff. But it's been a grind, man. It's been hard times. Friend, commit to learning new skills. And so I dove into the trenches personally. And this is also where I eventually figured out what didn't work on YouTube from, from testing lots of videos and then from studying online business, online marketing. And now after doing this for 10 years, I've learned about the types of YouTube videos that get massive views and not that just get massive views today, but also will still get views two, three, four, five years from now. And that's where you create real leverage. I've learned the best ways to earn money from YouTube. I'm going to be sharing with you what I wish I did differently. And you can also plug and play this into almost any business. And so this is for you. If you say, I want to be a full-time YouTube entrepreneur inside of the creator economy, earning money from YouTube, but you might be here. You're like, I want to do this for real estate. I'm a financial service provider. You might be here and say, I'm a pastor. I want to figure out how to leverage YouTube to get my message out. Or maybe you have a ministry. You're an author, thought leader, speaker, consultant, network marketing. You can plug this in and adapt these strategies to any niche and any background. So are you ready? I know that was kind of a tee up, but those are some foundations we got to build on. Let's get into the strategy of the day. And remember that over the next couple of days, we're going to be building on strategies that are going to get you to that first 1,000 subscribers and beyond. And here we go. Here's, here's day one, the ASQ method. The ASQ method. ASQ stands for answer specific questions. Write this down. Now, you may have heard this before, or this may seem too simple, I encourage you not to lean back, but to lean in even more because, because a lot of people are like, oh yeah, well, I've heard that. Well, if it's not working for you yet, you're doing it wrong because there's ways people go, oh, well, all the questions have been answered. No, that's not true. If you really lean in right now, you're going to get some nuggets that are going to cause growth on your channel. So people are making all kinds of different YouTube videos, you know, and sometimes they're frustrated. They're making videos about whatever, you know, videos. Uh, uh, trying to be fan, you're trying to impress people, trying to entertain people, trying to come up with something really cool. In fact, a lot of people fall into the trap. They're trying to make something really profound. YouTube needs something incredibly profound, revelatory, 
There's so much stuff out there. If I'm really going to stand out, I need to do something just amazing. Meanwhile, people are out there doing ASQ videos like this. How to drill into your wall. And if you look closely, you can see that this video has 1.3 million views. Now, before you get offended, you, you, you could say, well, that just seems so dumb and so stupid. Okay. Well, to the channel with 1.3 million views, it doesn't seem that dumb and stupid. And what I've learned is maybe you have a DIY channel. Maybe you have a carpentry channel. Maybe you have, you know, a building, a, you know, something that has to do with like basics of crafting, something like that. You're trying to make all these fancy things. Meanwhile, like the very basics and some of the most utility practical types of it, how to drill into your wall. Here's one of the big blocks that holds people back. They go, well, people already know how to do that. Well, clearly 1.3 million people don't know how to do that or they want help with that. So sometimes your greatest level of success can be found in the simplest places. You want more success to happen to greater simplicity. And, and how to drill, okay, so here's another example. So how to drill a hole in your wall. Um, how to approach a girl works every time. Answer specific questions. So these are just examples of different niches. You have a relationship niche. Now, this is also a really good title because not only is I, I'm scared to approach girls. If you, want, if you want to help people with confidence, relationships, and you start thinking about, okay, what is the person need, that first, I, I need to know how to approach a girl. And then you throw in the parentheses, works every time. Well, I got to click on that. I mean, if it works every time, it's got 5.1 million views. Well, Sean, the question has already been answered though. I have a dating channel and that person has already, listen, stop. Okay, first. Second is that has 5.1 million views, but you'd be stunned for the new channel, the practicality of using this method to get 500 views. Sean, are you saying that I'm going to get five? No, I'm not saying you're going to get 5 million views the instant time you, the, you immediately when you upload this. I'm saying when you start making the right videos and doing ASQ properly, you'll get that initial channel growth. Yeah, but I heard from another person that I'm not saying this is the only strategy either. This is one of five strategies we're going to be building on over the next couple of days. And we teach it first because it's one of the best ways to get your channel started and to get one, your channel growing at first. Well, I don't know if I want to answer questions for the rest of my life. Who said the rest of your life? Like there's something about just starting simple so you get those initial subscribers, you start attracting the right initial audience. Let's look at another one. Beginner workout routine made simple. Home or gym, 11 million views. See, what people argue with is they say that if you do ASQ, you're not gonna go viral. I, I don't know what, what how you define viral, but 11 million views seems pretty good for just a beginner simple workout routine, right? Renting versus buying a home, the 5% rule, 2.6 million views. Now, one of the mistakes people make is they will title their videos stuff like this. Like, so this makes sense. It's a kind of Ben's helping people with real estate, renting versus buying a home, answering a specific question, 2.6 million views, by the way. But a lot of times people will title their video, the 5% rule in real estate. What does that even mean? Like that, uh, like, unless... I might, unless I know Ben and I want to click on it and that's, well, Sean, I heard a different title strategy that Casey Neistat uses. Casey Neistat has 2 million subscribers and you have 20, Bill. It's time for you to actually think about growing up. Eventually you can like create certain types of titles that will capture the curiosity of your subscribers. But if you title your video, the 5% rule in real estate with zero subscribers, it make, doesn't make sense. It, Meanwhile, people are like, should I rent or buy? And you have the opportunity to start growing your channel by tapping into answering specific questions. And so check this out, where to start when reading the Bible and how to read the Bible for beginners. 69,000 views. If you had kind of like a faith-based channel or something, again, sometimes people though, they go some niche thing. They'll go like, the the cherubim of Jeremiah. And you're like, what even is that? Like, again, you're like, oh, that worked though for this channel that I watch, but they already have a following. How to start reading the Bible might be a better way to meet some people initially before you go on to the 
the cherubim revelation of Jeremiah. Like what? And this is how people are titling their content or trying to even build that initial foundational audience because this video is all about getting a thousand subscribers. That's what this challenge is all about, right? So, you know, I really learned this the hard way because when I started my channel after that video I just showed you, these were the initial videos I, I uploaded. Look at the titles. I mean, it's like Perseverance Plus Focus, Sam Chan Generation Church, 10, 10, 10. <laughs> like, you know, commas, the Seattle ski fever, droid X direct upload, Sean thinks episode 10. What are we even talking about? And so this came out of my pain. <laughs> so one of the reasons I found that one of the ways wisdom comes is from doing it the wrong way for years. And then eventually being like, oh my gosh, I've been doing it the wrong way. I'm exhausted. I'm tired and it's not working, but the revelation hits a little bit harder. And so my friends, that's what this challenge is all about. You're going to be learning from my wisdom that came out of my mistakes and the years of wandering in the desert. And you're going to learn from Heather Torres and things we've had to overcome and challenges. And you're going to learn from Omar El Takori of all these, because, because the reason these strategies are so strong and we know they work, not just for us, but now for thousands of students in our community is actually because of how bad we did it for years. And so I was making the wrong videos. And I wasn't answering specific questions. The videos had like no purpose, vision, clarity. But then I stumbled. I told you I was going to tell you a secret I learned from Dave Ramsey and Gary Vaynerchuk. A lot of channels use this. But I stumbled upon answering specific questions. Now, Dave Ramsey, if, you've, if you haven't heard about him before, he does personal finance. So again, you can do this in any niche. But he's a personal finance guy. Helps people get out of debt. He has a particular philosophy of that and different people have different philosophies. Um, and he's built an absolute empire. I mean, a thousand employees and he's got, he's on the radio, he's written books. But one of the things people don't realize is Dave Ramsey is like one of the biggest YouTubers. Like they don't even know he has a YouTube. He gets like 20 million views a month on YouTube, him and his team. And they actually have multiple channels and you would never think about him as a YouTuber, but it's, he really is. And you think about the influence and the impact. Well, what does Dave Ramsey do on his channel? He answers specific questions. What is his strategy? What is the, the secret? What is, he answers specific questions, okay? And so look at this, how to be good with money, 2.1 million views, the best way to buy a house, 2 million views. What makes people poor? These are specific questions, the three basic money skills you need to know. And if you look on screen, notice that these videos also have been continuing to mature and get views for the last couple of years, which is the power of YouTube because it just stacks and builds as you continue to answer specific questions. Well, Sean, I don't want to fall in a rut and only do that. We'll stick with us for the whole challenge because there's other strategies. But this is one of them. And, and do we really need a car? Our car payments. He just constantly answers specific questions. And then I look at Gary Vaynerchuk. He has literally a show called Ask Gary V. And he wrote a book called Ask Gary V. What does he do? He answers specific questions, right? And you can see this social media strategy trickle through all of his different platforms. Sean, this seems too simple. Friend, sometimes the greatest success is found on the other side of simplicity. Now. Is there nuances to this? Of course, finding the right, like Heather shared with Answer the Public, finding the right questions to answer, making videos in the right way, understanding best practices on the platform, of course. But there's something so powerful when you're getting clarity for your plan this year on YouTube of just answering specific questions. Here's Marie Forleo. What is she doing in this video? She's answering specific questions. And here's a key to this strategy. One of the reasons people fail is because they AGQ. They answer generic questions. There's a reason there's a specific in the title. Specific is your opportunity, especially in a world that's getting more noisy and more crowded. If you try to, if you're in real estate and you make a video that's like how to buy a home. 2022, you, you might not break out. Uh, like, that just might not work. What's too generic? But then I think about Levi, who read YouTube Secrets, one of our students, and he is about to collect 
or already has collected over a million dollars in profit, $38 million in real estate, a million in commissions, no paid ads, just doing YouTube in the Dallas market and answering specific questions for his local area and doing home tours and doing, uh, you know, neighborhood tours. And, and, and so many leads have come to his business from using this strategy properly, but he's not going generic. He's going specific. Reminds me of Zig Ziglar who said, it's better to be a meaningful specific than a wandering generality. And in 2022, I think you should write that quote down and really think about how your YouTube channel is living by that. You don't want to be a wandering generality on YouTube. That's where I started and that's why I stayed stuck and struggled for so long. You want to be a meaningful, specific, not a wandering generality. That's why we're answering specific questions. I find it so fascinating that the question is, should I get my PhD in, in, in anthropology? And this is actually a Q&A show. That's a very specific question. Or chase a lifelong dream of becoming an astronaut. It's also personal. It's a caller. But this strategy could go could turn into a Q&A show for you in your industry, in your business, as a live show. We're live right now. In this first session, we're over on Think Media. Smash like if you've been getting value. And we're in our Challenge Facebook group. Join us for the next couple of days and register if you're not in yet. It, because... We're able to, and just to say, we're going to do VIP, we'll answer back and forth, specific questions. People have very unique, that's why people call Dave and they're like, I've got $45,000. I'm trying to buy a truck and I'm trying to pay off my student loans. And, and those videos asked by specific people, or rather those questions from a caller that could come in on social media, turn into some of his most valuable videos. Because they're not generic, they're very specific, nuanced questions. So what is a specific question you could answer on your YouTube channel? I want you to brainstorm. Of course, we're going to be doing work. Just so take a deep breath, you know, pull out that journal, pull out your, your battle journal, right? Your battle plan for YouTube this year and, and really start game planning a couple different video ideas. If you are already know your niche and you know what your channel is all about, there's probably five or 10 of these that are the most asked the things that the people you help, the people you serve, the curiosity of the audience you want to serve. But you also might be saying, Sean, I actually, though, I'm not even really sure what my niche is yet. Stick with us because we'll help you on that. We've got content on that. And, 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 and hold this strategy off to the side. If you're not getting clarity yet, just write down the question and think about it because this is going to be like layers. It's like brick building. We're going to build one brick at a time. Rome wasn't built in a day. It was brick. It was built one brick at a time. And throughout this whole challenge, we're going to be stacking up these skill sets. But write down a couple ideas. These are going to be some of the videos you're planning out for the rest of the year. Um, look at this. This is a couple I've done. Five ways to make money on YouTube with a small channel. 2.2 million views. And this video still gets five views every hour. Five people watch this vid video every hour and it's four years old. How to make a YouTube video start to finish. I answer the specific questions for the promise that I have made on YouTube. Like I help you build your influence with YouTube specifically, find the best tools, what kind of cameras, how to use your camera, how do you edit, and also strategies, the best tips and tools for building your influence with YouTube is what Think Media does. So I answer specific questions in my niche and in the channel that I help you with. And never forget, 70% of viewers use YouTube to help solve a problem right? And so that's why answering specific questions can really be such a great foundational strategy and also a scale strategy that can scale your channel to the moon. We're experiencing that at Think Media. This is Nicole. And Nicole started to apply this strategy. She's one of our Video Reiki Academy students. And she made a video a couple of years ago, Tummy Time for Newborns. She actually eventually broke it down. Remember, specific questions, three months old, four months old, five months old. There's different stages where there's maybe different details. She's a kid's occupational therapist, but friend, she did an ASQ video and it got 4.8 million views. You know, I, it makes me think because what I've learned is that when the student is ready on YouTube, the teacher appears. And, you know, not everyone's, you might not be looking for tummy time for newborn videos. I wasn't, but now I'm a new dad, right? 
So the that's why it's the power of putting out an ASQ video. Someday, there might not even be that particular your viewer yet, but then, you know, they end up with a kid. And now I'm like, shoot, I got a 15 month old. What do I do? And this is a picture of my wife, Sonia, and my son, Sean Bradley. And, and now I'm like, when the student is ready, oh, how do you do tummy time, man? How do I keep this kid alive? How do I do this stuff? You know, uh, we just uh, just had his first time in the snow this last holiday and his first time meeting Santa. And so you can see that went well. And I'm glad that, uh, uh, you know, when he's 20, he'll be able to talk to a counselor about this experience because obviously you can see the emotional damage that seemed to be happening in this moment. But again, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And remember, we're going to be talking about money making strategies. And one of those is YouTube ads. Now, you might have already heard about this, of course. YouTube's one of the best platforms that really pays you for views. We have so many coming up over the next couple of days that you don't even really need a lot of views to start earning money. But I said, hey, Nicole, how much did this video pay when the video was only at 2.7 million views? I DM'd her. How much ad revenue did you make from your 2.7 million viewed tummy time video? So she makes one ASQ video, puts it on YouTube. It blows up. She makes $7,525. Isn't that crazy? One video. Do all her videos get this many views? No, but you know what's crazy? It's almost, she's over like 10K now because this video is still paying her and she's stacked up. She just committed to the strategy. She just kept answering specific questions, getting 1% better with every upload. You know, one of the powerful things with YouTube ads is it can really grow. It can be a primary strategy. In the last 365 days, I think media has made $397,717 from ad revenue. Now, I know you might've felt like you just got punched in the face because that's a lot of money, dude. You know, as like a small town kid grew up in the country, I'm like, what are we talking about? You know what I mean? Like that's, that is a crazy amount of money. And I share that though, just to speak to how practical the creator economy is, because legitimately, am I trying to suggest that this is a promise of an income claim? By no means. Like, I'm not saying that this is a guaranteed result or anything like that. But what excites me is the practicality, again, imagine 10% of that just from YouTube views a year, like a 40K year in YouTube ad revenue. That might replace your current income at your current job. So thousands and thousands of people every day are tapping into that reality. But one of the best ways to do it is answering specific questions. Why? Because when you make a video today and it keeps being viewed tomorrow, your income just continues to stack and stack. What if it was just 1% of that number we make at Think Media? That'd be $4,000 a year. That's a, imagine $4,000 extra dollars. That's a whole nother fake. That's a nice vacation. That's, you know, that, that, that thing you want to buy. That's socking a little bit more way in money and in investments. That's just raising up your, like, this is happening, friends, right? And if you're interested, heads up, you may have seen that for a limited time, we have uh, a special going on our YouTube starter kit, which includes our downloadable guide. It's a PDF with 51 make money making video ideas. That's at tubestarterkit.com. Again, you can check that out if you want, but we just talked about ad revenue. So when we talk about this next 2022, the creator economy going to over $100 billion in the whole ecosystem. It's not just one approach is how people are getting there. There's 51 different money-making ideas in this guide in terms of whether it's affiliate marketing, whether it's how people are connecting it to their business, whether it's very niche things like setting up particular JV partnerships, right? Or how you're doing sponsorships and brand deals, even with a small channel, or whether you're doing like ebook strategies and all kinds of different things you can do. And I want to lean in on this a little bit because it is going to take work. Oh, Sean, you like, I made a video and then I, I posted another one and I never had clarity on a business model. I never had a real clear plan. I never really figured things out. I didn't set up some other stuff. It, you have to be, I want to encourage you to get the most out of this challenge. You got to be teachable and willing to maybe think differently than you've been thinking. Create maybe a business model around your YouTube channel that's outside of the box that you've been thinking. You know, they say that it's hard to read the label when you're inside the box. We got to get out of the box this week. Think a little bit bigger, think a little bit different. And so that'll serve you if you're actually interested in learning some of it. I know inside of the challenge, you've already take, took advantage of the special we're doing. Just something that'll really, and there's a lot of other cool things in there too. But on the idea of making money, and then of course, over the next couple of days, we're going to uh, 
be going more into that. But hey, as we land the plane, uh, I just want to answer and talk about this question and do a little bit of goal setting for this year with you. You know, how do I stay motivated growing my YouTube channel and my online business is a question we get a lot. Because I want to give you kind of some realistic expectations for what's coming ahead. And what this kind of thing could be perceived as, you know, or you're watching this on YouTube or you're watching this in the challenge group is again, you're like, oh, is, is this like one of those get rich quick things? No, it's not. I assure you, this is not. YouTube is a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's going to take work, resilience, dedication, planning. And I want you to stay motivated over the next seven sessions. Uh, it's going to be real easy to maybe watch today's session, but then Kevin Costner is whispering your name in your sleeps, sleep, and you're like, dude, Yellowstone season four, dude. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. And, and, and he's, you know, Kevin's calling you. You've got Selling Sunset, the new season out. They're, they're, they're called, you know, you've got all these other YouTube videos. I'm asking you to stay motivated just through this challenge, but more than that, you got to stay motivated all 2022. But more than that, how do you stay motivated over the next decade? Because this thing is so real, but one of my highest values is trust, integrity. So in this moment, I just want you to hear from my heart, this is going to take commitment. This is going to take focus. It's going to take diligence. So here's how I've learned to actually create unstoppable motivation. I know it's a big promise, but unshakable motivation for what it's going to take to build your YouTube empire. And here's what it is. It's reasons come first, results come second. What does that mean? What I mean is that if you're going to stick through the highs and the lows and the challenges and the uncomfortableness of getting on camera and comparison and what is my family going to think and what is everybody around me going to think, you've got to have strong enough reasons fueling you to push through all that's ahead. Now, listen, by following the strategies we're going to give you, it is going to be easier. It is going to go faster. This is a shortcut because you don't have to go down all the wandering and pain and mistakes that I made. You can learn from those, but it's still going to take, it's still going to be challenging. So, well, Sean, what does that even mean? I want you to write down right now as we are in a challenge and taking notes and really building our game plan out. What are your reasons for wanting to succeed on YouTube? What are your reasons for wanting to build a YouTube channel? And I want you to brainstorm. You know, it might be there's a particular car I want. It might be there is uh, a, a, I want to go on a certain vacation with my family. It might be that I want to start so socking some money away in my college fund for my kids. It might be that we're just needing to, we need extra money, man. We're, we're in trouble. It might be that I hate my nine to five job. And I want you to brainstorm some reasons, but I also want to challenge you that those are good, but where it really gets interesting is where you really start tapping into, man, I really want to make a difference in the world. Like, I really want to help this particular group of people. You know, later this week, you met Larry, who grew 10, 1,000 subscribers in just 10 days. He's training in this challenge. He's going to be talking about 10 things he wish he knew or 10 things he learned. And another person, that's in the afternoon this week in the Facebook group, right? We also have Dr. Andrea. She helps people with chronic pain. And she's getting over a million views a month now from following the strategies you're going to learn in this challenge. And her reasons is to like help people and change lives and serve people. So what happens is when you get up and you feel discouraged or when you get up and you get a negative comment or when you get up and you don't want to keep going, when you can go back to this list of the reasons, no, I'm on a mission that's bigger than the critics. No, I've got a vision that's bigger than my feelings. No, I want to make a difference in the world that is, is more significant than just entertainment or just being comfortable in the moment. This is going to be a decision that we need to make constantly. So having this framework of reasons come first, then results start to come. Then the videos start coming out. The subscribers start coming in. Your commitment, your stick to it -ness, your stick with this happens on the other side of that. And this is so real to me. And where I really learned this is really my reason for starting YouTube and working so hard to get where I am today. You know, if you don't know my story, in 2009, my wife almost died. And that's my wife, Sonia. She 
in 2007, went on a mission trip, got sick, started to lose all kinds of weight. She's throwing up 10 to 15 times a day. Eventually, she needed a feeding tube, as you can see. And they put the feeding tube in her nose. But after she got stabilized, they did a surgery to put the feeding tube in her side, J. Junim, and they placed it wrong. And so the liquid food that was supposed to be going into her stomach was filling up her body cavity, which will suffocate your organs and it'll kill you quick. So we had to rush her to the hospital and Sonia ended up in the hospital for six days, Seattle, Washington, Virginia Mason Hospital. And I'm sitting there by her side that entire time, freaked out. You can imagine. And not only that, I've got so much stuff running through my mind. It's 2009. We had bought a home, but the big short happened. The bubble burst. We're losing our home. We're literally trying to short sell our home. We had a rental property. The tenants lost their job. They're not paying rent. That house is being foreclosed on. I told you I started in church. We're a part of this church and the senior leaders steal some money, start getting weird and actually become leaders that really aren't worth following. And that thing starts falling apart from 1700 on Easter to less than 200 people. My world was falling apart around me. One of the reasons I'm so passionate about us doing this challenge right now is because I got to go through a personal pandemic 12 years ago. And now, as you might be experiencing some of the th same things, you might be like me. I've lost loved ones over the last couple of years. You might be like me. You're seeing disruption in your income or you're seeing different things. You might be going through some of those stuff. Friend, in that hospital room with my wife for six days, I started to really worry first, then pray, and then really be like, God, man, what am I even doing with my life? And I felt challenged. Man, I got to step up as a man. Man, I got to step up as a leader for my family. I got to figure out a way to make some money to pay these medical bills. And honestly, my reasons were not because I wanted to get a certain car or do, I was just trying to figure out how to work from home because I didn't know. We were dual income too. We, we, my wife had three jobs. I'm working at Red Robin in the church. We have five jobs together. That income uh, flow is off. So now I'm like, dude, I got to figure this out. I got to man up. I got to lead. And I hope that at the beginning of this challenge, I know this might feel kind of intense, but this is real stuff, man. Like we are so serious about your success on YouTube. But we're not trying to, like, you've got to stand up and lead. Like, you've got to step into another level for yourself. I know I had to. And I would not be here because it's like, oh, I just typed in a few lucky keywords and the channel grew. No, I've been through pain and wanting to quit and wanting to give up. Because not only does eventually my wife stabilize and we get out of the hospital, but then we go on the ride of our life of the ups and downs of being on the wrong medications and, and medical bills piling up and then being a part of other jobs and being around toxic leadership cultures and being around all kinds of different environments that, that were challenging throughout the years. How, Sean, did you keep going when you wanted to quit? Reasons come first, results come second. I kept going back to my reasons. Dude, I gotta, I gotta figure out this YouTube thing, man. I got to figure out how to do, how to make this, this thing work. And then what happened was, is it worked. I started to first make a lot of wrong videos, do all the wrong things. Then I started to figure out some stuff that you're going to be learning over the next couple of days. And then we built a six figure income. And then I was able to, as an independent content creator with my wife as our CFO, no need to have a title when like we're sole proprietors and like I make the videos and she does the checkbook, but as I, I, I make enough for our family, I go, oh my gosh, like we could settle here, just start collecting, a, you know, from YouTube, keep doing this. But like this thing is, has real life changing power and what it not only changed our life and helped us get out of a financial of debt of over $700,000 in debt. It helped us get out of debt, helped us find purpose. It helped us climb out of these challenges. It helped us regain our confidence out of being so beat down and so without hope and so discouraged and having no vision that we're like, man, we need to share this with others. And over the last couple of years, as I was helping pastors with important messages, launch their books and entrepreneurs revive their businesses with YouTube, I was like, we got to get this message out. Thus, we shift into what are the YouTube secrets and what are, and that's why we're on this mission to help 10,000 purpose-driven people create a full-time living, doing what they love while making a difference in the world with YouTube and online video. So what are your reasons? And I know I've been going long here, but I want you to 
This is foundational to the whole thing. What are your reasons? Is it to pay medical bills? Is it, and then is it because you you really want to make a difference in the world, make a dent in the universe, share your message, get your book out, you know, change people's lives. And what I've learned is it's those things that help you push through the hard times. It's, I mean, right down the car in the vacation too, or the dream house. But I wasn't like fighting for a material thing. I was fighting for my life and my wife's life. And thus, I was able to push through the hard times. And it's been nuts too, because, you know, you saw a little bit about it earlier, but even think that 10 years later, we actually didn't think we were going to be able to start a family with the medical challenges and all this kind of stuff. And God did a miracle for us. And you, you already met him, but we now have Sean Bradley Jr., right? And we've seen on the other side of hustle, of persistence, of learning, of investing in ourselves, just the power and YouTube has helped make that possible. It just really has. So why do you want to succeed on YouTube? And at this point, I want you to also just write down some of your goals. Let's do it right now. Goal setting for 22, how 2022, how many subscribers do you want by when, how many are you shooting for? And more than that, I want to challenge you. We're going to do this over the next couple of days. Omar teaches a concept about output goals rather than results goals. And how many subscribers you get is cool. But what's also more challenging is my goal is to post one video a week, even if it's as bad as Sean's. I don't know if that's possible. It's going to probably be better than my first video, especially because you're watching this challenge. So my goal is to post a video a week. My goal is to study YouTube and online business two hours a week. My goal is to, that's, that's these things you can guarantee their growth goals that will result. And then I want to be at a thousand subscribers by the end of the year, 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I want to, we want to do some goal setting because it gives us a target of what we're working for. I want to pay down this debt. I want to earn this much amount of money. I'm working backwards from this amount, amount of money I need a month. Cause that'll allow me to quit my job. That'll allow me to go part-time. That'll allow me to chip away at this financial challenge that I have. What are some of your goals? And we're going to use ASQ today. And we're going to keep building as we go throughout this challenge. So write down your reasons. Reasons come first, results come second. And then write down some of your goals, five to 10 of them that you have for what you want from this challenge, for what you want from your channel, for what you're committed to doing. And let's just quickly recap. Number one, YouTube is healthy and growing. Number two, use the ASQ method to get 1,000 subscribers and beyond. I know it seems simple, but when you answer specific questions and you do it with some of the nuances we're going to be teaching over the next six sessions, you're going to see how powerful this is. Um, earn more money with YouTube AdSense, and then also write down your goals and the reasons you want to succeed on YouTube. Friend, commitment is the foundation of all great accomplishments. We don't grow YouTube channels without committing. And honestly, we don't grow in our lives without committing to growth. So I'm here for you. And I just want to invite you at this moment to commit to this week being a week of transformation. Like what would happen if you went all in? What would happen if you just blocked the time to not just listen to this session and take notes and journal it out and do the challenges? Because every single day we have a challenge in the challenge. It should be challenging. It's not just information. There's some stuff for you to do today. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. But I, I want to invite you to commit to this and to really commit to starting 2022 right and really creating massive momentum with what you're going to be learning. But that's also going to be on the other side of your commitment. I can't control that. That's up to you for what you want to put into this thing. And if you happen to be watching this on YouTube and you're not in it yet, jump in, man, right now. You could go to tube1kchallenge.com. That The rest of the sessions are happening inside of our private Facebook group. And you can see details in the YouTube description because also in the next session, um, Heather Torres is going to be teaching the TSS method, how to turn your knowledge and life experience into views, more ways to monetize your content, even if you're just starting or you have a small channel, and tips for creating videos and building your confidence on camera. So it's going to be amazing. Definitely join us for the entire challenge. Think Media, we're going to cut it here. We got more stuff to do in the Facebook group, but thanks so much for being a part of this training on the YouTube channel. And uh, tube1kchallenge.com is where you can actually join the full thing 